I'm Pastor Cedric Rouson, and I want to welcome you today to the place of change. I believe the Holy Spirit has directed your steps and allowed you to collide with us in this sacred space because God wants to change your life. So thank you for being a part of this moment. I believe that your week, that your year, and even your life will thank you for it. Now today you're going to hear a word that I believe has the power and potential to challenge and even change your life. And if this word leads you to make a decision for the kingdom of God, perhaps to give your life to Christ, maybe rededicate your life, or perhaps you're asking us to help you along your journey of spiritual growth, I want to connect with you. Text us with the code word SKC decision to number 71441, and we will lead you in your next steps along your spiritual journey. Connect with us online, Place of Change VA, on all of our social media outlets. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Place of Change, where you can find other teachings like this. Where you can just share this message so that others can hear what the Lord is saying to us today. Finally, if you're so led of the Lord after hearing this word to be a blessing to this ministry by sowing tangibly into this work, we want you to know we will pray over that seed. We will receive it. With joy, we will ask God's blessing and harvest in whatever way you need it most. And we believe we're good ground. We have made a decision this year that we're going to be open with God. And we believe that as we're open with God, God's going to be open with us. That the heavens are open to us. And God has something great and mighty in store for his people. Check it out right here at the Place of Change. Well, I want you to get your Bibles and go all the way to the last book of the Bible. We're going to the book of Revelation, chapter 4. And I want to lift in your hearing verses 1 and 2. I told you last week while preaching from Malachi that I would come back to a deep scripture that you probably haven't really read before. And today I'm going to do just that. I want to lift the book of Revelation chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 and the new king james says it on this wise after these things i looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which i heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying come up here and i will show you things which must take place after this. Immediately, I was in the spirit, and behold, a throne set in heaven, and one sat on the throne. Look back, look back at verse 1, look back at verse 1. After these things, I looked, and behold, a door standing open in heaven. We've been preaching about an open heaven now. This is my fourth week. A door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet. That's how clear and loud that voice was. And What did it say? Come up here. Come up here. Come up here and I will show you. I will only show you if you come up here. I got something to show you, but you got to come up here. And what am I going to show you? I'm going to show you the things I feel like preaching today, which will take place after this and today I want to talk using as a subject, level up. That's what I want to preach. You ought to put it in the chat this morning. Level up. Level up. I come to you this morning admitting that this, this sermon, this revelation is really just the drippings from a, a conversation which served as a breeding ground between... Uh, me and my uh, creative director, Sister Hope, we were talking a few days ago, just sermonizing, if you will. You know, she's something like a bootleg preacher. And nonetheless, we were having conversations about these theological uh, nuances and somehow interwoven into it, we were testifying about how God can turn tragedy into transition. Interestingly, it seems the low moments of our lives become turning points, how the Lord will invade our space and invite us to be a part of a moment from which our lives will never be the same again. 
I admit to y'all today, we talked so long, she probably could preach this word this morning herself if I handed her the mic. As we each compared our own stories and we somehow found solace by looking at John, who was exiled to the island of Patmos to be punished for preaching the word of God, yet his isolation, which was intended for his desolation, actually gave way to a revelation because he was open with God. I'm going to say that again, that we found our solace by looking at John, who wrote this book, John, who was exiled to the island of Patmos to be punished for preaching the word of the Lord. And yet this isolation that they put on him, which they intended for his uh, desolation, actually opened him up to a revelation. Why? Because despite being exiled on Patmos in a closed space, he remained open with God. He was isolated, but the Bible says John declared, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day. I feel like preaching today. He said, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day, and I heard and saw, and the voice that spoke to me said unto me to write to the, the, the seven churches of Asia Minor. What I want you to see is that interestingly, we see this man in an isolated place, a place designed to bring tragedy, and yet God uses it as a place of transition. It was there he saw a vision of Christ whose hair was like wool, eyes like fire, feet like brass, and a voice like the sound of many waters. And he said to John, write the things which you have seen and the things which are and the things which will take place after this. Look at his threefold assignment. God told John, write the things you have seen. Write the things which are. And then I want you to write the things which will take place after this. So John wrote seven letters to the churches in Asia Minor, as we find in the book of Revelation, chapters 2 and 3, addressing their current plight and God's covenant plan for their plight, should they be open and obedient. And in many of those cases, he would say that I that, that here I am standing at the door and I knock or I've set before you an open door. He had these, if you do this, then I will do that. And, and I just want to note, this is not necessarily in my text, but I think it ought to be noted that the body of Christ is not a monolithic organism. It is not all one in terms of sameness. If it were, then John would only need to write one letter. The fact that John writes seven letters to seven different churches in seven uh, different situations means that in the same context that even in today's world, the body of Christ in India might not be experiencing the same thing as the body of Christ in Haiti. And the body of Christ in Haiti may not be experiencing the same thing as the church in Africa. And the church in Africa may not be experiencing the same thing as the church in America. But aren't you glad that God is specific enough to our plight that the Lord will send a word to us wherever we are to provide us opportunity to change. Then our text opens up in chapter 4 with these words, after these things. What things? The things that we had just read, the act of John writing to the church uh, or to the churches in Asia Minor. He says, and after these things. That word in Greek, that phrase in Greek for after these things is metatota. After this, or after these things, stick with me. It speaks to the new vision that was to come. It represents a shift from the church age to what would happen after those things that are present. He is now shifting from writing to the present plight to now writing to the prophetic moment. That in which is to come. Literally, the things that he wrote from this moment on, many of which we are still waiting to see come to pass. Literally, this phrase, when he writes and says, after these things, metatota, it means, catch this, that, that the rest of what we read in Revelation occurs with this turn. Everything else hinges on this turn. It implies that what is coming is uh, a break from that in which was before. To put plainly, when you hear that phrase, metatota, it implies your last chapter is over. I want you to let that sink in your spirit this morning. 
when you hear that phrase, when I declare a metatota over your life, I am saying that these things, that you have experienced and lived through and the things you have had to endure are done. And what comes next in your life will not be like the things you have experienced before. Lord, have mercy. Y'all forgive me. I feel like shouting off the book of Revelation today. I'm telling you that everything else in your life exists on the other side of this metatota. You, if you receive it, you ought to just declare that word over your life and just declare over yourself, I'm living in a metatota. I'm living in a turnaround. After these things, no matter how bad these things have been, thank God these things were not permanent. I am getting ready to experience and after this. Interestingly, the verse reads, after these things I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet speaking with me saying, come up here and I will show you things that are meant to take place better tota after this. Now, we have noted in the last several weeks of preaching and teaching that an open heaven is an affirmation, hence the baptism of Jesus. That an open heaven can be a confirmation, if you remember, at the stoning of Stephen. That an open heaven is even an indication, as we talked about with the tithe, bring the tithe and I will open up the windows of heaven. But today, finally, I want to suggest to you that those things, at best, catch my turn, bring heaven to us. But God says, I'm not just interested in bringing heaven to you. I'm interested in bringing you to heaven. And thus, I would submit humbly that this last turn in this conversation about an open heaven is that an open heaven is not just an affirmation or a confirmation or an indication, but that an open heaven is an invitation. Open heaven extends an invitation to an opportunity in a new dimension where God reveals more to you than you have previously or even presently experienced. We're often aiming to bring God down the eye level, but what if God was actually interested in releasing a metatota and bringing you up to God's level? What if God said, I'm not interested in changing your situation? What if I were interested instead of bringing you higher into a revelation? This is what this book and this text and the power of this context is about. That John, from a bad situation, received the best revelation because he leveled up. After these things, he went to a new dimension. Like we, like John, know what it means to be tasked with having to make spiritual sense out of our present uh, situations and perplexities. His challenge was to minister to both the foolishness and to the faithfulness of the seven churches and everything else in between. Our challenges, it seems, has been to focus amidst the problems that keep existing among us from the the, the weeks we have ha have had to witness the catastrophes in weather in places like Texas, the acquittal of an ex-president in relation to the insurrection, mixed emotions uh, in regards to the vaccine, pressure to return teachers and students back to the physical classroom, and the reoccurring presence of grief in our personal spaces, not to mention the gambit of your own personal litany of problems. My point is many of us have been caught up in the present perplexities. I wish I could pass the mic and we could have testimony service, and my hunch is most of you, even if you were to brag on the goodness of God, your bragging on the goodness of God has been about how God has met you in your present perplexity. I had COVID, I had sickness, I had loss, I, I, I had a loss of income, lost some loved ones, had friends that left and had problems on every side, but the Lord has been a present help. I want to suggest to you that like John, we know what it's like to get caught up in the present. But I want to tell you this morning that I see God opening up the heavens with an invitation for you to come out of your present into another dimension. I'm not 
just telling you today that the Lord will make a way in the midst of your trouble. That's a good sermon, but you're used to hearing it. What if I were coming today to tell you that your present problem may not shift, but you will? I ain't got no help in this building. What if I told you that your present situation may or may not turn yet, but the Lord is extending you an invitation that if you are SVP, the Holy Spirit will bring you up to a place in the spirit where your life will never be the same again. God's word to you this Sunday is level up. There's an, a greater and a higher dimension of God, of glory, of grace, of life, of love, of freedom, of peace, of joy, of overflow, of anointing. But you won't tap into it on the level you've been living on. God said, I got something greater for you that your eyes haven't seen and your ears haven't heard. And it hasn't entered into your heart and your friends can't confirm it. That's why you're on Patmos. You don't have a prayer partner who can tell you that's God's will. You don't have a boo jank who can walk with you into the promise. God said, I want to pull you into a level for which the only thing you have as your confirmation is an open heaven. You got to come up here. You have to level up in your prayer, in your praise, in your posture, in your planning, in your progress, in your people, and even in your position in life. The heaven has opened to you to give you an invitation to level up. Now, it's growing up. In First Pentecostal Church, 1434 Wilson Road in Norfolk, Virginia with the Reverend A. Ray Rouse as my pastor. It was interesting because we'd be in church. Sometimes we had a mother in our church by the name of Mother Jackson. Mother Mildred Jackson would catch the spirit. She and her husband from New York, they had moved down. And she would get happy, and she really didn't shout much, you know. She didn't have a fancy dance. When Mother Jackson would feel the spirit, it would be weird because you couldn't tell her praise from a prophecy. She catch the Holy Ghost and she starts saying, higher, 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 come on higher, come up higher, come up higher. And we were trying to figure out, are you praising the Lord or do you got a word from the Lord? And maybe it was both in the same, you know. She would get happy and would just start walking around and saying, higher, 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 come on higher, come on my seat, come on my seat, come up higher. God knows I miss the old church. Come up higher, come up higher. And I don't know why today, but I feel the spirit of Mother Jackson on me saying to you come up higher come up higher come up higher you've been spending too much of your time consumed with haters and instigators and spectators come up higher come up higher you spend so much of your day worried about negroes who don't like you and people who said you can't be nothing come up higher come up higher. if you spend as much time living in your present looking at your future as you did looking at your past you'd be more engaged in your victory than you are come up higher come I'm up higher. I don't know who needs this word and I don't know why God told me to preach this and this is probably not a happy ending to this series of messages but for somebody I'm here to tell you that if nothing changes but your strength in the spirit you have the victory God told me to tell you it's time for you to love love. Dry your tears Stop crying over who's not with you. Stop being depressed over who left you to die. You might not get the support you need, John, but you don't need it. Come up higher. Come up higher. Lord, I wish you were in church, but since you're not, I dare you to just put it in my chat. Can you be my church mother for me and let somebody else know? Come up higher. Come up higher. Come up higher. You can't be that anointing and stay that carnal. Come up higher. Come up higher. You can't hate everybody. Come up higher. Come Come up higher. You're not going to be able to carry the glory and your bitterness. Come up, up higher. Come up higher. You're going to have to let stuff go even with people who didn't apologize because you've got an appointment with destiny. Come up higher. God told me to tell you level up. Well, how? Thank you, Hope. How do I level up? Here's my one attempt get you ready for what God wants to do in your life. Here it is. You need to surrender to the next dimension of spiritual 
sensitivity. You got to surrender to the next dimension of spiritual sensitivity. Can I read my text again? He said, after these things, metatota, I looked. Mm, after these things, look at this. I looked and behold a door standing open in heaven and the first voice which I heard was like a trumpet. I looked, I heard, I saw. That voice said to me, come up here, I will show you things which must take place after this. Verse 2, immediately I was in the spirit and behold a throne set in heaven and one set on that throne. Isn't it interesting? As I said before, that in his last chapter he was writing about his present of reality, the plight of the seven churches. But now with this turn, God says, I want to shift you from focusing on the present reality to focusing on the prophetic of revelation. And the only pathway, the thoroughfare to get to that next dimension is in the spirit. So I need you to surrender to the next dimension of spiritual sensitivity. Okay, here's my PSA for the day. Uh, the spirit told me to tell you I want control of your senses. I want to be Lord over your sensibility. I told you, look at the text. After these things, I looked, I saw, I heard. Now let's put this in context, right? I'm imprisoned on an island, likely barely being served food. I have been put on what my father would call of Patmos a portable insane asylum. Looking at four white walls. I have been catapulted into the most deranged place possible. Because I have learned, footnote, if the devil can't kill you, he just wants you to live as if you were already dead. And here I am in the worst of place. Catch it. But I refuse to give the devil my senses. Here I am in a jacked up situation, but I still got my spiritual sense. I'm still sensitive enough that I can see in the spirit. I can hear in the spirit. I can obey what the spirit is telling me preaching here, fool. I can still discern when it's God talking to me and not my own emotionality. What I'm telling you is that the key to leveling up is to increase your spiritual sensitivity. Can I go deeper with this? I'm telling you that there is a dimension that people in the flesh will miss. They won't be able to make out what God is saying because it's not sensual, it's spiritual. Woo! This is why you got to be careful with confirmation because confirmation often too easily becomes a door to manipulation. Your need to hear confirmation and affirmation will end up putting you in a position to be manipulated by people who are trying to make sense out of your spirituality. You're the one who heard God. They didn't hear God, but your own spiritual insecurity will drive you to put your vision at the foot of somebody who didn't hear what you heard. And, and by the time you get finished listening to them, they have talked you out of your vision and let you preach up in here, Darnell. They have talked you out of your vision and left you so depleted of spiritual strength and you could have avoided that whole week of depression if you didn't need their voice in your head. God said, for what I'm doing, I'm doing something that's going to only make sense in the spirit. It is not going to make sense in the flesh. How can a man on Patmos be caught up in heaven to see anything? It doesn't make sense in the flesh. And in that same way, I rise this Sunday morning with what few little minutes I have left to tell you what God does next won't make any sense. 
Woo, I feel like shouting. I'm going to say that again. I said what God does next won't make any sense. It won't make any sense. How somebody with your level or lack of education is able to score that level of income and position at the company. It will not make sense how somebody whose heart has been broken so many times still has such a great ability and capacity to love and forgive people. It makes no sense at all how the Lord will indeed pull you from the gutter and from the back and the one who felt you were only good to be an adjutant to somebody great that's a churchy term to be an armor bearer for somebody great God said I'll use you in the front put a mic in your hand put my words in your mouth and use you preach up in here Ross. it makes no sense how somebody who has your background who has your lack of pedigree would be able to sit in seats of influence and you've watched other people who had it all together fall completely apart it makes no sense how up underneath all of this pressure you've been able to still move in the direction that God has called you to but while you're trying to figure that out let me add a few more things to it it also makes no sense how red sin mixed with red blood equals white as snow it also makes no sense how the blood is so efficacious that Jesus could die on one cross to years ago but that blood still be alive enough that it ain't dried up yet and when you plead the blood demons have got to flee and devils have got to run and sickness has got to go and cancer has got to leave I'm telling you God has never been in the business of making sense and this is why you got to hold on to your spiritual sensitivity because what God does next in your life is not going to be something that makes sense to your flesh oh but if you tap into the spirit, I said if you tap into the spirit, God said I'll open up a revelation to you that you have never thought would be possible. And all you'll know is that in the midst of what would seem to be the worst season of everybody's life, you'll be writing vision and making it plain. You'll be moving forward in the direction of God's will. You'll be saying, yes, Lord. I still don't know how I'm going to get out of debt, but I got a plan to finance a vision. I'm still trying to figure out how to pull all the pieces together. And yet, I got a revelation that something is greater than the season I'm in. If I'm preaching to you, I want you to open your mouth real quick and just declare, God, you can have my senses. I'm not trying to make sense of the flesh anymore. I don't care how I feel. I care what I hear. I care what I see. I care about what you said. And if you said it, I believe it. I don't feel healed, but you said I'm healed. I don't feel blessed, but you said I'm blessed. I don't feel like a conqueror, but you declared I'm born. And the Bible says, he said immediately, immediately after what? After I surrendered my senses to the Lord. That despite all I've endured, I was still able to see and to hear and to recognize his voice. He said, I decided to RSVP to this invitation. And immediately, I was in the spirit. And behold, a throne set in heaven and one who sat on the throne. Huh. I dare you type this in my comment section real quick. And just declare to somebody, tell them, get in the spirit. I remember coming to prayer in the years when we could gather. We have prayer. And then now and again, there'd be some, some distractions that would occur. Because the enemy is always trying to tear up that in which is tearing him down. And I remember now and again, the saints would get weary or there'd be a, 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 just some type of distraction that would come. And I can also hear the voice of Elder Betty Temple in the circle. And she do like this movement she'd rock and somebody else could be praying it's their turn to pray and they're doing their best to pray but she noticed a distraction and all of a sudden you hear her out of your other ear yell out stay in the spirit stay in the spirit stay in the spirit and I would always say oh lord it would almost shake you to your core but in its own way it would sober you up 
it would get you back in line. And I don't know why I keep hearing all these saints helping me preach today, but I also feel like I feel like Elder Betty is standing on this pulpit telling somebody today who started off this year excited. But between January 1 and the end of February, you've hit enough transition that is starting to break you down. I feel Elder Betty telling me to tell you, stay in the spirit, stay in the spirit, stay in the spirit. You can't afford to fight this in your flesh, stay in the spirit. You can't afford to defeat this if you only have your feelings. You need to stay in the spirit. And the Bible said, John said, I got to close. John said, immediately I was in the spirit. He said, and behold, I saw in heaven a throne and one who sat on the throne. He responded to the invitation. He leveled up. And all of a sudden, he saw a throne. Now, this is my clothes. I don't know if it's a churchy one. Here's his the best way I can get out of this. Y'all ready? He said, I saw a throne. Of all the things John could have seen, of all the things John could have experienced, of all the things that would have marked for John the idea that this was God's will, I would think that he would have been caught up and Victoria, he would have saw a breakthrough. I would think he would have been caught up and saw victory. He said, no, I was caught up into the next dimension. And do you know what existed? That dimension, a throne. Lord, I wish I would have thought of this. I would have had y'all go get my father's chair. He said, I was caught up in the next dimension. And all I saw was a throne. And one who sat on the throne. Wait a minute, John. All in his hell, all in his turmoil. Oh, this is about to get good in my spirit. I feel it. All of the price you've had to pay, all of the agony you've endured, all this persecution, and you mean to tell me the only thing the Lord shows you as a sign? that you're at the next dimension is a throne and one seated on the throne and my brothers and sisters I found myself in, in a theological uh, 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 a theological complexity. I found myself in a conundrum of the text. I literally found myself now pondering. I said, Lord, how can I get out of this sermon? This is not a good way to end the sermon. I should have ended the sermon on a shout that you were taking me to the next level. How in the world can I end this sermon preaching about a throne? Certainly you would have shown him more than that. All you've shown him is a throne and you want to know what the Lord said to me? I close. I'm going to shut my iPad. The Lord said, oh yes, bring it here quickly. Come quickly, because I'm ready to, to stop preaching. He said, I looked up in heaven, and all I saw was a throne. You can just set it right behind me. And I said, Lord, this doesn't make no sense. Shouldn't there be something else on the throne? And the Lord said, no. What else would be on the throne but Jesus? He said, you're the one who keeps putting everything else and everyone else on a throne. He said, but as far as I'm concerned, he said, what I'm trying to show you is that as long as everybody else has a seat on the throne, you're stuck in a lower level. You know you have leveled up with the only thing that grabs your attention now, is Jesus seated on a throne. Good morning, Shekinah Kingdom Church. I rose to my feet to tell you that the key to this year being the best year you have ever had is for you to come up higher. And if you level up, God said, I'm going to take you to a place where all of those problems and all of that pressure and all of that situation that you've been focusing on won't have 
right now. You can be filled with the Holy Ghost, but it won't happen if you just look at your phone like you're watching Netflix. Forget about me. Tap into the next dimension. If you tap into the Holy Ghost, the heavens are open. 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 This is your moment. This is your chance. This is your opportunity to tap into the Spirit. Six days last week, the devil tried to give you your flesh, but let the devil know, just like it was with John, it's the Lord's day, and I'm in the Spirit, and you can touch me here, for he that dwells in the secret place of the most high shall abide. I come against depression, I come against loneliness, I come against stress and fatigue, I find anxiety flares up in your mind. The devil is a liar. I will not fear, for the Lord is my life. And my salvation, whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? With the wicked, even my enemies and my foes came upon me to eat up my flesh. They stumbled and fell. The host of the camp round about me. I will not fear. The war should rise against me. In this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, and that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his tabernacle. Oh, who am I preaching to today? The Lord told me to tell you, come up a little higher. If you level up, got a word for you. I'm done. If you level up, the Lord will give you a revelation that so far exceeds your situation that you will forget your own patmos. If you would level up, God said, I will do something in your life that will make you forget the hell you've been experiencing on Patmos. And you want to shout? Here's your last shout today. If you will spend your Patmos in another dimension, God says the moment you recognize Patmos doesn't have to control your senses, then, y'all ready for the shout? I'll release you from Patmos. I used to think as a child that maybe John died on Patmos. Nope. Patmos was only a season. And when it was over, he went back and lived out the rest of his days. And what I'm trying to tell you is that God says that what you think has been trying to kill you has really been used by God to shift you into a new dimension. And don't you waste this space. Don't you waste this space. Don't you waste this space. You treat this place right and tap into the spirit of love. Then God said, I will use this season of your life to shift your life. And then all of a sudden, the same hell that put you in this place will be over. But I don't want you to shout that that is will end. I want you to shout over what I will reveal while you're here. God, right now, we make a commitment. In the name of Jesus, we will not waste an open heaven. I make a commitment. I'm not going to waste an open heaven. Even if my open heaven occurs from Patmos, 
I declare when you show me that open door, I'm moving in your direction. Woo! And I'm declaring in the name of Jesus, I'm going to level up. Lord, lift me up until the only thing I see is the only thing that matters anyway. And that's Jesus seated in power, in authority, on a throne far above whatever issues I have had to deal with. I thank you today that heaven is open for me. And I respond to the invitation. Lord, I ask this week that when the enemy tries to distract us and pull us back into a place of flesh, to pull us back into a space of emotional dysfunction, I pray you'll help us to retrieve back to the spirit I refuse to let the devil have my senses. Hallelujah. I'm going to increase my spiritual sensitivity and I'm going to believe God that you don't have me where you have me for no reason. This is because there's something you're releasing in my life and I thank you. I give you praise for it in Jesus' name. It is so. If you don't know the Lord, pray me right now. God, I come in Jesus' name confessing my sin. I acknowledge you were the Savior of the world. You died for me. You rose for me. And by your grace through my faith, I am saved. Come into my heart. Be my Lord forever. And I will be yours in Jesus' name. If you prayed that prayer, I want to lead you in your next steps of faith. I want you to text us at SKC Decision to number 71441. SKC decision to number 71441. And we want to lead you along your spiritual path. I just believe that today is your day. Maybe you need a church home. You need somewhere you want somebody to help you grow. We then we want to be that person, that church, that family. As I leave you today, I'm telling you. I'm, I'm warning you in advance. As we start this Lenten season, fast and all of this, I'm telling you now, the enemy is going to bring distractions your way and they're going to be diabolical distractions. They're going to be distractions of the epic kind. Stay in the spirit. Don't you give yourself over to foolery, to failure, to stress and fatigue, you stay in the spirit and watch the revelations God will give you. You need to get a journal because the Lord is going to reveal some things to you that will take place metatota after this. You're entering into the next dimension. Lord, cover us by your grace this week. Let nothing come near us that can stop us. Thank you, Lord that you're going to open up our heart and our sensitivity to the spirit and we won't make this a singular experience but we're going to share this experience with others we're going to be present in the moment to bring Christ to everyone whom we encounter in some kind of way I thank you that this week is a victory week and for this we make a commitment that we're going to level up in the name of Jesus now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit may it rest rule and the Pie henceforth, now and forever. The people of God who are going to level up this week. Say amen. I love you.